What's up? This is Vincent with Dance Games Daily, or I'm calling it that until I think of something better. Um, I keep recording these videos later and later, so I don't know if that's problematic for me or not, um, but I'm just going to go with it. Um, today I'm just going to go through the ECFA uh, DLC and patch just for like some first impressions, and then I'll also actually start off um, by looking at comments from the previous video, and I think for the sake of kind of engaging with the comments a little bit more, I'm going to try to kind of look at some of these comments um, at the start of each of the following videos. So first one is from Osnot, uh, liking that idea of renaming to Dance Games Daily, um, and asking, have I thought about doing a small series on building a pad? There have been good resources like Reflex.Dance that have come out recently, um, but sourcing the parts seems a little hard in the US right now. You want to play at home, but still want that arcade feel, which uh, options like the LTEC don't really offer. Step Maniacs platform sell it instantly. Yeah, I just feel like the best uh, option these days is really you f somehow try to find a way to get an actual DDR pad. And then if you wanted some like extra control out of it, I wrote up a guide on kind of taking FSRs and installing them into a set of existing pads. And I really made this guide kind of like as foolproof as possible. So even if someone has a minimal experience, as long as they're you know, a little bit confident, then th with, with some pictures they can figure it out. Um, Reflex Dance, I've never actually, I've never tried to look into it myself because I already own pads, but um, I can definitely reach out to someone to maybe talk about it. I think uh, Dom ICG is a really good person for that. He's actually currently building his own pad right now, like from scratch, not off of Refle Reflex or anything, just off of his own experience playing the game for several years. So I'll maybe reach out to him. Another is from Rafflecopter Designer saying thanks. Uh, congrats for one month. Looking out to whatever comes next. Uh, saying that it'll really open the door to all sorts of cool content. Getting to hear from players abroad. That's actually another topic um, I'm interested in talking about. Kind of like dance games around the world. Um, I definitely have some fun ex experiences in um, Vietnam and Singapore. And I have some other friends that have some good experience. Some good experiences playing in like... Thailand and I think even like the Philippines and Malaysia so yeah maybe that's something interesting to talk about um another one is from ATB saying um it would be really useful and interesting to interview Steve to talk about his thought process behind designing waterfall and such um that's actually going to be a, an interview kind of planned that's in the works so I don't have a release time for that but that is in the plans okay so as far as these patch notes are concerned um 1.2 came out. Oh, that was on my birthday. Uh, updated annotations. Let's see here. Sync for random things. Charting typos. Um, I wonder how these sync things kind of like slip in. I feel like our community is normally pretty uh, attentive to sync issues. Um, but it looks like we released a bunch of DLC. Or this is the day one content. The DLC. More patches. I mean, the patch was pretty big. So I don't know like what all went into it. They said there was a patch Rico annotation fix. I know there was an argument about that because um I know I made a video on it saying that patch Rico is like the best chart for learning side switches, but I think the reality is that because it's so easy to just double step it that um a lot of people end up double stepping it anyways, despite it being side switches. So I'm curious to see what the fix was for that. Um I'm actually gonna make a whole video just on Tarot's mods because those are really useful and um kind of worth looking into, so. Yeah, I kind of I kind of wish these uh, patch notes were a little bit more descriptive so I could know what the original kind of problem was and what it changed to. So, you know, like, if the offset changed, what was the original offset, what did it change to? Um, you know, if the Pacho Rico annotation changed, what did it used to be? Uh, what, did it, what did it turn into? You know, so. Um, I think it would be useful, but... Yeah, thanks so much to the, the team for putting out DLC in the first place. Um, and also for getting patches out pretty quickly as soon as they were reported. So, um, yeah, I think Cowboy Rock, the corrected display BPM, was actually causing it to not play at all. Like, you couldn't play it on... Well, I'm pretty sure you could have played it on Xmod, but I think Cmods and Xmods were messed up, so... Okay, with that said, let's actually dive into the DLC. Um... What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna just scroll through it um, for maybe songs that catch my attention uh, and maybe like kind of other things on the way. But 
my goal is just to kind of look at at least what dropped. And actually, let's let's what level is Pachirika? I'll take a look at that annotation as well. So, uh, going into it, there's Dead Ball to start. Um, I think something really cool is that um, I don't actually know if the original chart for Dead Ball um, has a lower or not. Um, I don't have it loaded on this computer. Um, but Sudzy actually, I believe, wrote new lowers specifically for this event. So uh, some of these lower charts are actually seeing uh, their first appearances in this event. So Flamenco House, I think, is a banger. Um, the expert chart is super fun. Um, I would love to see kind of how those double taps are involved. Ooh, good song. Um, I'm pretty sure anytime I see an animated banner, I just assume it's Delperion. Nice. Matador lower? Has that chart always had a lower? <laughs> this is such a great song out of... I'm pretty sure MDX charted this for Democracy, so... If there's any chart that I want to look at at the end of this video, it might be that one. If I look at a chart at all. Nice. Pretty chill selection. Um, man, they, they really threw a lot of bones. Um, there are not a lot of 14s added, for example, and, you know, there's a lot of lower content in this. Stamina 10. 530 steps. Dude, look. Animated banner done by Telperion. Who's surprised? Not me. Oh god, the the weird part about Hysteria is that I'm so used to seeing the implode expert 13 with like the Watatsumi foot switch bracket thing. Um that imagining an 8 for it is like kinda terrifying. Um Okay, so this is let's actually go into day one. Let's look at Pachirico. Um, let's see what the notations are. Hopefully I have, it's refreshed. Side switch plus, yeah. It was originally notated, or I don't know if it was originally notated, but there was a notation on that for DS++ plus plus in side switch minus, uh, which is weird. I think the only consistent rule that you can go off of is what the chart was intended to do, and I think the chart was intended to be done as as side switches, so it doesn't really make sense to notate it as uh, double steps. Alright, let's look at the DLC. This is a classic. I've definitely played this countless times. Uh, kind of like early on in my ITG time. In the grand, in the grand scheme of things, I, I started playing ITG uh, pretty late compared to some of the top dogs. So not quite old school, if there's such thing as like a middle school ITG player, kind of, that's where I would be. I like this BPM range. I like that there's like a 9 as fast as this at 175. And it is rightfully a stamina 9. This is a good bracket chart. If you're looking for bracket charts, Echo is a good one. Oh, come on. This one is this is this one is supposed to be called Say So for Vincent. And now it's Say So 925 points. I bet that 9 is more fun than the Super Web Tempo like 11. <laughs> All right, what else is in here? Oh my god, there's going to have to be a video on bangering. This chart is ridiculous. Um I'm pretty sure it's a chart that's easier on left, but it's not legal to play charts on left, so. Dude, I love these custom banners. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys knew this, but some of these packs did not have banners. Some of the original packs didn't have banners, so. I don't know which ones originally. Like this one. Lovely Text 2, I don't think, had any custom banners. Um, it was just like one pack banner, so. Um, there's a lot of charts in here that. Are there any in here? 
maybe not so much here, but there are a lot of charts that actually didn't have specific song banners um, that were specifically made um, for this event. So that's also really cool. So there's, you know, shout outs to also the ECFA like graphics team for, for putting these together. I think the favorite one I have is, uh, which, which is, what level is Bad Intentions? Oh no, it's not Bad Intentions. There's one with like a... Wait, isn't that the one, isn't this one supposed to be the one with the goose? Oh, I did not mean to do that. Um, I thought that would be the one with the goose. Did they change it? That's, that's disappointing if they changed it away from the goose. But yeah, Kooky Spooky custom banner. Also, a Halloween classic. Okay, there's that's, there's a lot of letters going on here. Balix ten. If there's burst, then that means that they're at two hundred twenty BPM or two hundred thirty BPM. Okay, that's a little scary. Nocturus, I think of as the only chart in Prickly Pear that's like playable. <laughs> Playable in the sense of like not losing your sanity. It's interesting seeing v silly video game bleep bloops still get uh, tournament coverage because the first national I attended was DDR Storm 2016, and I think that song was even in that pack, which was five years ago. So yeah, it's it's been around for a while. Yo, shout out to my friend Brain. He loves Mr. Bill. That sounds like a Rhythms 11 for sure. Okay, I had to play this for Bofa. I had to play Diet Punk for Bofa. I don't know if a 10 for Technique is correct. I don't know if it's that hard, but... You know, if it's worth a lot of points, I'll take it. Right, uh, if you've played Eternity, there's also a version by Chris, um, and the one by Butte, which is the one that's playing right now, is a lot harder in the end from what I remember. There's like some bursts in like the guitar solo at the end, so don't get thrown off by that. Seriously, Flamenco House is so good. If you haven't had a chance to play it, um, even the lower one, just the song is so good, definitely, definitely give it a shot. Marionette's fun. It's really straightforward. There's nothing like crazy that goes on. Just a few crossovers. Um, I know Ben Pai was telling me that he wished his chart was played more, so it's cool to see this one in as well. Yeah, if you want to practice fast side switches, they're like candles. They're like candle side switches. So, like left up right, and then you foot switch right down left. Suck it up, suck it up. Going sideways. It's a little wild. I have not actually played this, but it is old. Or at least the banner makes it look old. That might have to be another chart I look at. Alright, onto the 12s. Alone in the Dark, good foot switch and bracket chart. Um, charted by Rob Oaken, and it went through like 20 revisions. Oh goodness, this was in, I believe, I'm pretty sure this was in Club Fantastic. Alright, this Glitch Nerds card I will also look at sometime because this one's been catching a lot of people off guard. The original chart for Glitch Nerds that I know is charted by uh, ATB and Bimani Beats. I'm not familiar with the Ludi version, um, but it's kinda, this chart's been throwing people for a spin, so. Illuminate is also a fun chart. This is also in DDR Storm 2016, so it's also kind of like been showing its age. Also, shout out to the ET Bay team for picking up on the uh, alias change for Lei Shen. Keep it up with the times. Thank you guys. Actually, I just noticed. Yes, they're keeping. There's like this whole controversy I'm not going to get into about 
kind of like step artist names um and some of these used to show up as um like first initial last name um and i saw it happen for valixes but it looks like they got those sorted out as well so like this valix chart shows up correctly god i think i heard tommy playing this earlier tonight and this song sucks <laughs> Sorry to hardstyle queen, but respects for mute for for charting it. The song I just remember from Mute Mega Mix Three. I don't think I've ever played this song isolated, but from what I remember, it's basically just stamina. This chart's iconic. Five guys, one pack. It it is guaranteed to get a video now that it is an ECFA. I was already planning on making a video before it was an ECFA, so... Alright, on to the 13s. Okay, the real crime here, I love... Lick It. Lick It in terms of, like, how it puts tech together is incredible. Like, the way that chart flows. Uh, but I will say that it is kind of a crime how hard Daddy Mulk is to be only worth 5900 I was watching Rinker play earlier. He got like 22 awesomes um, on Lickit for 6,000 points. You could quad Daddy Mulk, which I think is quite a means harder, and like you would still get less points than 22 awesomes on Lickit. I don't know. That, that seems rough to me. Oh my god, this chart... If you're gonna play that chart seriously, do yourself a favor and just, like, look at it once before you play it, instead of just going into it. That chart is really doing the most. Summer Speedy Mix? No C mod! You know, thank god it's not worth an exorbitant amount of points, otherwise I'd be a little panicked. Vanishing Point I thought was... Ash's song, but it's not. Oh, it's an old Tony chart. You've got the cash reserves of a tortilla. If you're an old school player, uh, don't go into this thinking that it's the original, like, Tachyon chart, because it is not. Uh, the patterning is better, though, and there's no, like, dumb, dumb mines or, like, two jumps with, like, mines squeezed into the middle, like, none of that BS, so it's, it's, you've got a cache of, of a Tia, but it's modernized, so. Alright, on to the 14s. Okay, if... This song and chart combo seriously just makes me want to cry. This is... This is one of my top 5 favorite charts of all time. Like... Period. Across tech and stam is like one of my favorite charts of all time. Um, I I'm hoping to get at least... I would love to have both uh, uh, Zaya and Rust on to talk about it. I don't know how much they have to say about it, so maybe one, just one or the other, but... Um, I don't know. This to me, this chart is just perfect. There's a lot of tech involved, a lot of stamina involved, some foot speed involved. I think the song is incredible. Um, and also, the song is not cut, so it uses the full song cut. So you kind of get uh, the adventure of the song pacing from start to finish without anything removed. It's it's great. Cannonball is pure stamina. It's like. The breakdown is like 32, 16, 32 or something? There's like a, there's a couple 32 measure runs. I have to look at the breakdown for sure. Let's actually just take a look here. Because I have the density graph. 32, 16, 32 is what that looks like. So, yeah. Stamina FA player is getting, getting a bone thrown. If you're, if you're new to modern charting and you're capable of playing 14s, you should be alarmed if you see Valix and 14 in the same chart. If you see those two things together, just be on the lookout. Good tech, I believe, is also just like mostly stamina, so 
We're getting we're getting some good BPM range for for stamina here. 174, 170 for some slower stuff. 190 for for a little bit faster. Um, for songs like this, if you're kind of shooting for it, don't be too afraid about FA passing necessarily. Um, pushing your body through this kind of chart is is always a good idea. Just to kind of train train your body to go through that stress. I talked about that a little bit in my interview with Tommy. Is there anything I have to say about this chart? I feel like a lot of people know this chart. Um, it's it, it's mostly a stamina chart, but uh, there are some turns in the streams at the end. And then the turns as you go from the starting for the streams going to the end of the song, the turning slowly gets more intense in terms of frequency and movement. So. Um, I haven't played this one, but I've heard people talk about it. I think don't be deceived by... Don't be deceived by how chill the song sounds, because... Um, it's 165 stream, I'm assuming, with bursts, plus. Um, so the bursts are gonna be like... 240, like 250 BPM bursts, you know? So, definitely don't sleep on it. That's what I have to say for today. That's 21 minutes of pure... You know, unedited, me talking in front of a camera, just looking at DLC as my first impressions. Um, I'm going to start making a trend out of looking at my YouTube comments from the previous video as I start the next one. So I think my question to you guys is, you know, out of this DLC, what are some of your favorite charts and why? Specifically in the DLC. Um, and then I think I can actually probably take a look at some of them. I, I'm going over on time. This is already like... 22, 23 minutes. So, a, a little over on time, but... Other than that, um, more ECFA and hopefully ECS content to come. I'll catch you guys next time.